Not sure what size inverter you need for your microwave? In this video, I will show you the power readings and how to calculate the required inverter. I will test my own microwave, showing the actual power draw. At the end, I will take you through the required battery size and two electrical diagrams with wire and fuse sizes. Did you know the efficiency of a microwave? Let's find out. Let's take a look at the back of the microwave. Here we see two ratings, 800 watts, which we just talked about, and another rating of 1150 watts. This is the electrical input. But as we will soon see, this isn't always accurate. So let's test how much power this microwave actually draws. Let's put it on 800 watts and press start. You will see the power ramping up. <clears throat> and we got 1400 watts. That's actually 1.8 times the rated power of the microwave. So if you have a 1000 watt microwave, you can expect to draw 1800 watts. I recommend to multiply by two. So if you have a 1000 watt microwave, you will need a 2000 watt inverter, just like I have right here. Stick around and I will show you what battery size you will need. So is there a way to reduce the power draw from the microwave? What if we set 100 watts to the microwave? Will it also be pulling 100 watts on the input? Let's see. I'll be setting it to 100 watts and press start. As you see, it's drawing more power it's drawing 1400 watts. So it's cycling between 0 and 100%. So with a normal inverter, this is not possible. Only if we have an inverter microwave. The inverter microwave will be a true output. So if you set 400 watts here, the draw will also be 400 watts. So if you have a normal microwave, it wouldn't work only with an inverter microwave. What about the surge power of a microwave? A microwave doesn't have actually any surge, unlike a fridge or a pump. I did a review video about the Power Queen 2000 watt inverter, and I showed it didn't have any surge capabilities. So I just recommend sticking to the 2x rule. If you have a 1000 watt microwave, use a 2000 watt inverter. Let me take you behind my screen and I'll show you the battery size. I will also show you the wiring diagrams with wire and fuse sizes. I'm running my microwave of a single 12 volt 100 amp hour lead time mini battery. During the test, it was drawing 129 amps. Even though the battery's BMS is rated for only 100 amps, it can handle this because it has a surge capacity of 250 amps for 5 seconds. I ran the microwave for 3 minutes without any issues. Here's the mod behind it. 1360 watts divided by 12.5 volts equals 109 amps. Then 109 amps divided by 0 0.9 which is the efficiency of the inverter and we get 121 amps. If you have a larger microwave than mine, you might need two 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries in parallel, or a larger 12 volt 200 amp hour battery with a 200 amp BMS. Here's a diagram showing how to wire your 2000 watt inverter with a single lead time mini battery. You need to size your cables based on the maximum load of the inverter. Bigger isn't always better when it comes to inverters. Let's calculate. We will start with the current draw of the inverter. 2000 watts divided by 12 volts equals 166 amps. Then we have to account for the inverter efficiency loss, which is 90%. 166 amps divided by 0.9 equals 184 amps. And then we apply a safety factor. 184 amps 
times 1.25 equals 230 amps. So your cable needs to be able to carry 230 amps. If you use a 1 odd gauge or 55 mm square welding cable with 105 degrees Celsius insulation temperature, it can handle 285 amps. Now you need to size your fuse between the max current in the system, which is 230 amps, and the highest current the wire can handle, which is 285 amps. A 250 amp mega fuse will work. Remember what I mentioned in my video about sizing your cables? If you can purchase the cable rated at 105 degrees insulation temperature, then you will most likely have a cable rated at 90 degrees Celsius, unless specified otherwise. Let's check the current values for a 90 degrees Celsius cable. You will need to go up to a 4 odd cable, or 120 mm square, but that's bulky and hard to work with. A better solution is to split the cables in two pairs. Dividing the max current in the system, which is 230 amps by 2, and we get 115 amps per cable. A 2 gauge or 35 mm square cable can handle 130 amps each, so together they will handle 260 amps. Again, we need a fuse between the max current in the system, which is still 230 amps, and the max current the wire can handle, which is now 260 amps. A 250 amp fuse is the right choice. I will list all the components I have used in the description, so it's easy for you to find what you need. According to the NEC, you are only allowed to double up on cables if they are going to be larger than 1 odd or 55 mm square. So do not double up your cables if they are smaller than 1 odd. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks again for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.